Hi guys, today we're going to be doing some review first of systems and then we're going to be doing a short review on congruent triangles. Now I'm going to be doing some notes with you first. Um, we're going to do some of these key problems and then you'll be asked to do the rest um, by yourself. So um, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to ask you to make sure your name is on this paper and let's go ahead and go through some of these problems. We're going to start off by looking at graphing linear inequalities. And I'd like to remind you that there are four different inequalities. There's the less than, greater than, less than or equal to, and greater than or equal to. And those determine where we shade and also what type of line we make. If it's a less than sign, then we shade below. If it's a greater than sign, then we shade above. So this is a less than sign, so we'll shade below, less than or equal to. And the next one is greater than or equal to, so we'll shade above. These create dashed lines, and the or equal to include the points on the line, so they are solid lines. So that's kind of a quick review. Now, um, the first question we're going to be doing together is question one, and it asks, Tell whether the ordered pair is a solution to this inequality. Now they gave me an x value and y value, and we're going to plug those in right there and see if it reveals a true statement. If it's true, then the point is a solution. So I have negative 3 times x plus 2 times y is greater than 6, keeping in mind that x is negative 2 and y is 8. So I'm going to put a negative 2 in the place of the x and an 8 in the place of the y. And what I end up getting is positive 6 plus 16 is greater than 6, or 22 is greater than 6. This is true. 22 is bigger than 6. So what does that mean? This is a solution. So that's how you check if a point is a solution to an inequality using the equation. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to graph an inequality and we're going to state one solution and one non-solution. And I'm going to do number four with you right now. Now, anytime we graph an inequality, anytime we graph, we want it to be in the form y is equal to mx plus b. Even if the equal sign is a less than or greater than, we want the number, the x, and then a constant on the right and the y by itself. Now, if you take a look at this one. This is in slope intercept form. This is not. So in order to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is move this 3x. They're adding 3x, so I will subtract 3x from both sides. When you subtract 3x from both sides, you get negative 2y, so that's 0, is less than negative, negative 3x plus 12. Let's take a moment and look at that. The negative 3x goes here, and the 12 is positive, so it goes there. So these two numbers create two different terms. Then they're multiplying by negative 2, so I divide everything by negative 2. So then I end up getting y, and then right here I have a negative 3 divided by a negative 2. That's a positive 3 over 2. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. So I have 3 over 2x, and then I have 12 divided by negative 2. 12 divided by negative 2 is negative 6. Okay, now here's where we're going to use our rule. So this is a big deal. Did you notice that something happened in this line right here? I divided by a negative number. So the rule is, whenever you divide or multiply, uh oh, multiply, that says multiply, by a negative number, then change directions. Change directions. I'm sorry, I know that looks terrible. I'll read it to you. It says when you divide or multiply by a negative number, then change directions. What? So what does that mean? I'm going to take this less than sign right here, and it will now become a greater than sign. 
So now I'm actually ready to graph. I see that my slope is, is 3 over 2, and I see that my y-intercept is 0, negative 6. So let's see, I'm going to begin at negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. So there's 0, negative 6. And then I'm going to rise 3 and run 2. 1, 2, 3 up, 2 over, plot a point. 1, 2, 3 up, 2 over, plot a point. 1, 2, 3 up, 2 over, plot a point. Now this was a less than sign, so that means I'm going to shade below. And I'm going to make a dash line. I'm going to go ahead and make a dashed line between my points, nice and long, and, uh-oh, I said greater than. Did you catch my mistake? Come on, Ms. Martinez, get with the program. It's a greater than sign. That means we got to shade above. So we'll shade above. So that means that this whole area right here is where the solutions are. So here's what it asks. Um, they ask us to graph it, which we've done. We put it in slope intercept form. And then it asks, give us one solution and one non-solution. We did this before, but um, let's, let's do this one more time together. So a solution means that it's inside the shaded area. So that means any point in here is fair game. So um, let's, let's, let's pick a point. How about this point right here. Okay, so that's the point, let's see, 3, 3. 3, 3 is a solution. 0, 0 is a solution. I mean, they only asked us to find one, but you know how I am. I'm getting a whole bunch. That's a solution. That's a solution. Gosh, there's lots of solutions. Okay, those are all solutions. A non-solution might be, let's see, how about this point right here. Okay, so that's the point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 2. 5, negative 2 is a non-solution. So that, that's what you're going to be doing for this um, square. Okay, let's move on to our next question. Now we're going to be looking at graphing a system of linear inequalities. It means you're going to be graphing two lines at once. So I'm going to start by doing number 6 with you. So my goal is to put these both in slope-intercept form. And let's just do a quick checkbox here. Who's in slope-intercept form? Voila, this one is in uh, slope-intercept form, so I'm a happy camper. Um, but the top one is not. So I have y plus 3x is greater than 2. This is an easy fix. Subtract 3x from both sides, and I get y is less than negative 3x plus 2. Check that out. The negative 3x, the positive 2. See how they're not added together? They're side by side. So now I have both lines. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. Um, here's y is less than or equal to 2 thirds x plus 1. Okay, so what I have to do right now is graph both of these. So I'm going to color code them. We're going to make this one green, and I'm going to make this one blue. So let's collect our information. For my green equation, my slope is going to be 2 thirds. So I'm going to go up 2 to the right 3. And my y-intercept is 0, 1. For my blue equation, or inequality, I'm going to be using the slope negative 3 over 1. Sorry, my equal sign looks terrible. Negative 3 over 1. And my y-intercept will be 0, comma, negative 2. Oh, 0, comma, 2. Now, um, this is going to be, this one will be a solid line. And it's less than, so I will shade below. Below. And my blue line is a less than, so I'm going to shade below and it will be a dashed line. Okay, let's get graphing. Okay, so my green line will start at 1, and then I'll go up 2 over 3. Okay, so I'm going to start at 1. I'm going to go up 2 over 3. 
of 2 over 3. And this is a solid line. Okay, here I'm doing my best here. Not bad. Okay, a solid line. And all of my solutions for this equation are below. So look at all those solutions. All the points in there are solutions. Okay, now let's graph our blue line. Our blue line, we're going to start at 2, and then we'll go, oh, we forgot to label this, down 3 to the right one. Down 3 to the right one. Okay, so let's start at 2. There's 2. And I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3 over 1. Oop. Down 3 over 1, 2, 3 over 1, 2, 3 over 1. It's really hard to draw these points. Okay, this guy is a dashed line. Okay, and all of his solutions are below that line as well. Okay, so take a look at this. Remember, the solutions to a system are where the colors overlap. It's where the shading overlaps. That's where the solutions are. So to me, that question's really saying is, where do I see green and blue? I only see green and blue in this section right here. So go ahead and take some time to shade that section in. That means that only points in that section are true for both lines. Okay, um, now we're ready for some more notes. Okay, now we're going to be looking at solving systems of uh, systems by graphing. And what I want to remind you is that there are three possibilities. One, two, three possibilities. So one option is you've got two lines and they intersect at a point. And you go, woohoo, they intersect once. Another option is that those two lines are parallel. And the last one is that those lines are overlapping. This would mean that there is one answer. One point is the answer. This would mean that there's no solution because they never cross. Or this would mean that there's infinitely many solutions. Okay, so keep that in mind. There's either one, none, or infinitely many. Okay, we're going to be doing this first question number seven. So my first uh, thing I'd like to do is put these both in slope-intercept form. And when I take a look at these guys, this one is in slope-intercept form, and this one is not. So let's go ahead and take care of that. So here's what I've got. Um, it's almost in slope-intercept form, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna subtract 2x from both sides, and I get y equals negative 2x plus 4. There it is again. The negative 2x comes down first, and the positive 4 goes second. All right, we have officially put this in slope-intercept form. Okay, so we'll call this our blue line, and our green line will be uh, y is equal to negative 2 negative two thirds x plus 4, and that will be our green line. Okay, so my blue line has a slope of negative 2 over 1, and a y-intercept of 0, 4. And my green line has a slope of negative 2 thirds and a y-intercept of 0, 4. Now these are equations, so there's no dashed line, no solid line. You just graph it, and that's it. So let's go blue first. We're going to start at 4, and then we'll go down to right 1. So I'm going to start at 4. And I'll go down 2 to the right 1. Down 2 to the right 1. I'm just going to keep on going until the cows come home or I run out of graph. Okay, so here's one of my lines. Not the best line you ever saw. I hope yours is better. Okay, my second line is going to start at positive 4 also, but it's going to go down 2 to the right 3. So here we go, I'm going to start at 4. Oh, I see an intersection point. And I'm going to be going down 2 to the right, 1, 2, 3. Down 2 to the right, 3. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draw this line. 
not the best line you ever saw. And the question is, which, uh, what happened? Is there one answer? No answers are infinitely many answers. There is one answer, and the solution is 0, 4. It's the intersection point. So that's your answer. Okay, that's question 7. All right, let's go ahead and turn the page. Okay, so on the back of the page of the Beyond the Bell systems um, review, we're going to be looking at word problems, and we're especially, you and me, going to look at number 10. So let's read it together. Rollerama charges $4 for skate rental and $3 per hour to roller skate. Skate World charges $3 for skate rental and $4 per hour to roller skate. Now, there's some questions here, but this is a strategy I want you to use on your exam also. I don't want you to look at these questions until you have a graph. So our goal is to take this information and interpret it into slope-intercept form. So let's do that right now. So we've got two problems here. We've got Rollerama, which charges $4 for skate rental and $3 per hour to roller skate. And then I have Skate World. They charge $3 for skate rental and $4 per hour to roller skate. So how does that turn into algebra? Okay, so I'm gonna call this guy Roller for short. So Roller charges $4 once. It's just $4 to get in. So it's a $4 one-time fee. But then you have to pay $3 per hour. Remember, whenever, any, whenever we hear the word per, that tells me slope. So right off the bat, I know this is my slope, and this is my y-intercept. This is my m, and this is my b. That means my equation is y equals 3x plus 4. A one-time fee of $4 plus $3 per hour. That means my x-axis is hours, and my y is my total cost. OK, let's look at Skate World now. So for Skate World, I'm going to call it Skate, their one-time fee is $3 one time. So it's $3 just to walk into the place. But they charge you $4 per hour for skating. So now you've got your slope, because of that word per, we have a rate, and then a one-time fee, or a y-intercept 3. That translates to y equals 4x plus 3. So now, how do we take this information and put it on the graph? So I was going to graph this information on this graph using my stylus, and I realized it was going to take forever, and I was going to do a bad job of it. So I decided to cheat, and instead I have my graph over here. Ta-da! Voila! So let me see if I can, uh, let me see if I can grab this and move it over. Nope, I can't. Okay. So what I want you to notice first is that ours is down here. And I have uh, just some little tick marks I put here, each of those uh, in meaning one. So one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. I didn't have to put a lot of hours on here. But my cost, I went up to 16, and I went by ones. Um, OK, so let's take a look at roller skate, uh, Rollerama for, first. I'm going to start at four, so it's right there. And then I rise three over one. Rise three over one. Rise three over one, rise three over one, rise three over one. It's kind of hard to see because these two lines are so darn close to each other, but Rollerama is beneath um, Skate World after a certain point, even though it starts at four. Now, Skate World is the reverse. So, Skate World's starting at three, but it rises faster. So, it goes up four over one, up four over one, up four over one up four over one. And if you draw those two lines, you know, they're kind of hard to, to um, tease apart. But as you were graphing it, you probably noticed that this point right here, um, when you were graphing them, you, you created a point for both of them at the same point here at one seven. So now that all this information is here, now I want you to read these questions over here. So let's read what it says. Is there any amount of time that the total cost would be the same for the roller rings? Yeah, right here. So when would that happen? Uh, what time would that be? At one hour. That's the x value, so at one hour. What would the cost be? 
the cost would be $7. Is that exact or is it an estimate? That's exact. That's exactly where they cross. So it's $7. And what company would you choose and why? Well, nobody, for me, I would say nobody wants to skate for just an hour. I would want to roller skate for more than an hour. And if that's the case, then I would go with Rollerama because I know for sure I'm going to skate for more than an hour and Rollerama will always be cheaper. That said, if you hate skating, then, you know, you're going to skate for less than an hour, then I recommend you go with Skate World. So I just want to point out again how, um, what kind of strategy I'm telling you to uh, take when you do these problems. You're going to read the information, interpret it so that you can put it on the graph, and at the end, once you have a graph, then you answer these questions. All right, let's move back over here. And let's go to solving systems of linear solving systems by linear combination. For this one, I'm going to be doing just number 14. So something that really bugs me about how this printed, and my apologies, is it didn't line up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I have 4a minus 2b equals negative 1. And then I have negative 4a plus 4b equals negative 2. Ah, that makes me feel better. Now it's lined up. Okay, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to add or subtract these to eliminate one of the variables. And right off the bat, I think you and I both see which one it is. It's a, right? 4a minus 4a will be zero. So I end up with negative 2b plus 4b. That's 2b equals negative one plus negative two is negative three. Now right here, typically, if you were working by yourself, you would go, wait, I have made a mistake. This is clearly wrong. But I'm telling you, it's not wrong. It's okay to have a fraction. Let's continue. They're multiplying by 2, so I'll divide by 2. And you get b equals negative 3 over 2. Now, if you hate that, we could turn it into a decimal. And its equivalent decimal is negative 1.5. So, you know, either of those will work. I'm going to take negative 1.5 because I think most of you are going to prefer that. So we have our b value but we don't have an a value yet. How do we find it? By plugging b into either of those equations. Now you could choose the first one, you could choose the second one. I choose the first one. So the first equation is 4a minus 2b equals negative one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace this b value into this equation. So negative two times b equals negative one. So I'm gonna put in negative 1.5 Let's do our math, so I have 4a. If I have two 1.5s, if I have two $1.50s, that's $3. And a negative times a negative is a positive, so plus three equals negative one. Now we'll solve for a. I'll subtract three from both sides. I get 4a equals negative, oh, equals negative four. I'll divide by four on both sides and we get a equals negative one. Now remember, it's not an answer until you put this into a coordinate point. So the answer is that these two lines cross at negative one comma negative 1.5. And that means that these two lines intersect at one point. All right, so here is your task for the next 15 minutes. There are a bunch of blank spaces on this um, review packet. For the next 15 minutes, your job is to do as many as you can, and my expectation is that you would finish all of them. Please work in pairs or in threes, so with the people at your tables, basically. And um, at the end of these 15 minutes, you're going to be moving to an activity, um, one more activity in systems. Okay, I'll see you guys in 15 minutes. Okay, so for the next activity, you're gonna to need to be working in partners. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask you to, I'm gonna pause the, the this teacher's gonna pause the video, and your job is to partner up. So I'd like you in groups of two, and each team needs only one of these sheets. So I'm gonna wait for you guys to get into your partners and to grab your materials, and when you're ready, um, you're going to unpause the video and I'll give you the instructions of how you're going to do this. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video now and get into your partners. Okay, so you should be now in your partnered groups and now what I'm looking for is for each of you to decide who is A and who is B. So if you're A, please write your name on this side of your paper. 
your shared paper. And if you're B, please write your name on this side of the shared paper. If there are any groups of three, um, you guys can have two of these sheets. One of you is A and two of you are B. Does that make sense? So if you're in a group of three, there's one A and two Bs. Everybody else, one A and one B, one paper per person. What, oh, one, pers one paper per pair. One paper per pair, okay. So you've got this paper in between you and, and your chosen partner. Let me give you your instructions of what you're going to do. Partner A, you go first. So here's what you're going to do. Partner A, you're gonna take your paper and fold it in half so all you see is B. Okay, so fold your paper in half so that all you see is word problem B. Now, when you fold that in half, your job right now is to tell partner B how to do word problem B, okay? So that's your first step. All you do is you tell, and partner B, you should have a pen or a pencil and you're gonna be writing down whatever they say. Now you should read it together, obviously, but partner A is going to take the lead in telling you what to do. When you finish, and it should take you five minutes, no more than five minutes, when you finish, you're gonna fold the paper the other way so that only A is showing. Now once only A is showing, then now it is time for partner A to hold the pen or pencil and partner B will take the lead. Partner B will read all this information to partner A and then will tell them how to do it. So partner A will be completing this, but partner B will be telling you how to do it. That should take you no more than five minutes. That means that in total, this word problem activity should take you no more than 10 minutes. Now, because I love you, I will give you two minutes of I'm just talking to my partner time. That means you have 12 minutes and 12 minutes only to work on this activity. So let's say six minutes per side. Be fast, be quick, and if you finish early, you can enjoy the rest of your 12 minutes with your partner. Are you ready? Okay, your 12 minutes start now. Unpause the video when you're done. Okay, so you should have finished word problems A and B, and now I'd like you to go ahead and send one partner to the front of the classroom to grab a pair of scissors. What you're gonna be doing is cutting the paper in half. One of you, well, partner A will take their half and partner B will take their half. And your job is to keep this uh, special word problem as um, review for your retake next class. Okay, so make sure you keep your half. Make sure you return the scissors when you're done. And then now I'd like you guys to return back to your assigned seats. Okay, unpause the video when you're ready for the next activity. Okay, so now that we've spent some time looking at systems, I'd also like to review some stuff about triangles. So you guys are gonna be doing a coloring activity where you have to solve a bunch of um, problems that have to do with triangles and the angles inside them. So we've actually done some of these problems when we played the blind side, so they should seem kind of familiar. Um, but I just wanted to quickly review or remind you that remember that if you have a triangle, then angle A plus angle B plus angle C, these three angles, if you add them together, should equal, I hope you all said 180 degrees. So the key number is that you're gonna add all three angles together and that they should equal 180 degrees. Um, just a quick note, when you get to the very bottom, you should be looking to see or checking to see as you go along to see if your answer is down here. So, I mean, notice that there are a couple that are blue. So blue is gonna be 17 degrees. Um, another blue is 39 degrees. So that's what you're looking for. Once you've answered all of those, you guys can use colored pencils or markers to color in the back of this assignment. Um, but this is due before the end of class. So I'm gonna give you guys, I'm gonna say 25 to 30 minutes to finish this assignment. Um, if you don't finish coloring it, that's fine. But I am looking for you to have all 16 problems done. This is what the back of the page looks like. Um, and now as you can see, you know, this, these would all be the color for one. This section would be the color for 10. It actually turns out into a kind of a pretty assignment. I'll, I'll give it back to you if you guys don't finish it, but I'd love to see um, all the math done before the end of class. Okay, go ahead and start working on that and then I'll pause it before the end. So your homework assignment tonight um, has a focus of congruent triangles. So this is a review for congruent triangles. So I'd like you to do both sides. Um, and the idea is that you are thinking that, um, you're seeing that two triangles are congruent to each other. Remember, if two triangles are congruent, then all of their corresponding parts are congruent. 
So I want you to, if they haven't drawn a picture, like for number two, draw the two triangles, find what's the same, and then take what you know from one triangle and take it to the other. Okay, I will be collecting this assignment when I see you guys um, next class, and um, have a great day. Bye.